hello in this session we will spend approximately half an hour to learn about optimization method in prescriptive analytics within optimization we will learn about linear programming and how what is linear programming and how it is used for decision making as a part of prescriptive analytics i hope this you will find this video useful agenda so we will discuss the importance of linear programming as a business analytic tool in business organization they when then we will look at what are the components different components of linear programming then we provide a step by step formulation methodology for linear programming models and then we see how linear programming can be solved graphically and eventually we will solve a linear programming model using excel microsoft excels solver addin so let's start linear programming is a most commonly used technique and in fact it is one of the most used technique in business analytics and in linear programming you try you have an objective first you come up with an objective function which could be you try to maximize or minimize or set a goal to the objective function normally these functions are in terms of production capacity it could be a inventory level cost or the profit or the revenue so normally people will try to maximize minimize or set the goal targets for cost revenue profits production capacity inventory levels or the resource utilization and of course when you want to reach your objective normally in business it works in a set of constraint so when we set up this uh, we want to optimize there are some assumptions so when we try to put mathematical equations we use the optimization techniques and the linear programming technique we have some assumptions first assumption is a linearity assumption and it should, it says that with an assumption linearity it assumes proportionality and additivity proportionality means suppose you are making a chair and one chair cost 100 rupees to make then two chairs will cost 200 rupees and the assumption of edit additivity within as a part of linearity assumes that 
if one chair takes 100 rupees and one table take 200 rupees then of course as per proportionality two tables will take 400 rupees so to make two tables and two chairs you add up the cost of making two chairs and two tables so two chairs will cost 200 rupees and two tables are make costing 400 rupees so making two chairs and two tables will make will be done in 600 rupees algebraically linear equations that are used in optimization has constant and must have simple variables such as decent variables or such as x or y but they should so it, normally they are not like squares x square or x cube or x to the power n or they are not in multiplicative format like x of so x into y so we will have when we will solve an example and we will put some equation also then this thing will be clear to the this thing will be clear to you and of course there is assumption of certainty and divisibility the variables are certain and of course they are numbers numerics they are divisible in nature so they can be taken integer value or they can take fractional values one thing that is also there is that these variables are non negative most in most of the situation these decision variables take zero or positive values some examples of linear programming that we see in the business organizations for example a manager of production line want to minimize the total production inventory cost so it is an objective function while meeting the sales demand for its product so meeting the sales while minimizing so the sales demand could be a constraint while the meeting the minimizing the total production inventory cost becomes an objective a financial analyst may want to maximize the return on investment so that could be an objective function with a limited budget for stocks and bonds so budget could be a constraint a manager may want to maximize the customer life time value so ltv maximization becomes an objective while the budget limitation advertising budget limitation becomes a constraint a logistics manager may want to minimize the total transportation cost for products and raw material that becomes it so minimization of total transportation cost becomes an objective while meeting customer demand for new products or while meeting customer demand becomes a constraints so let's look at uh, formulation steps one by one and first when you look at you when you have a business problem or business issue then within the particular case if you define the decision variables and with the, when you are defining the decision variable in that problem you put a time framework in that definition because how long those decision variables or how long that particular situation exist once you have you to see what are the decision variables that can be changed or that on which the level or amount of which need to be decided then you formulate the objective function using these decision variables and then you decide whether your goal is to maximize or minimize and then you identify the contribution coefficients and then you create an algebraic or mathematical equation for the objective function 
once your decision variable and objective function is decided next is you go and identify the set of constraint first you identify the right hand side of the constraint then you express the left side in form of an equation and then you decide the direction of the constraint normally it takes form of equal less than equal to more than equal to and then one of the key assumption in linear programming is that all decision variable must be non negative so that is also a constraint let's look at one example to demonstrate the linear programming formulation and in this example there is a business bakery business called rolls bakery it produces two products first product is dinner roll cases and second product is sandwich roll cases total per week it has on its machine it can works for 150 machine hours are available and then one lot one lot is of 1000 cases of DRC and SRC these are two products this equation if you try to give an act so what is the what is the pro what is the issue that the owner of the bakery is facing so he is saying that how much the so issue is around production how many given that constraint of machine hours how many dinner roll cases and how many SRC sandwich roll cases he should make to maximize the total net profit and let's look at the same this problem in uh, so if you want to put like some information that is collected by the business analyst that each dinner roll case takes 0.75 dollars each sandwich roll case the price is 0.65 dollars so each lot is thousand cases so for for lot you multiply this by thousand you get 750 and you multiply it by 0.65 it takes 650 let's look at this thing in excel and see if we can demonstrate it in better format so the same information here is uh, for the dinner roll cases 0.75 1000 so it makes 1000 into 0.75 becomes 750 sandwich roll cases wholesale price because you multiplied by 1000 cases one roll lot so per lot the price wholesale price come up to be 650 dollars processing time per drc dinner roll case is 10 and for sandwich roll case is 15 hours cost of raw material per lot of thousand cases for drc is 250 for src is 200 so we calculate net profit which is wholesale price per lot shown here minus processing hours per lot into the 10 dollar which is a wage of the worker minus the cost of raw material so it's net profit per lot for drc is 400 dollars for sandwich roll case is 300 dollars demand per week is also given for drc is 3000 cases which equals to 3000 lots for src it's four so it works out to be four lots we try to put what if analysis also so our decision variables become first is how many drc lots and how many src lot it become x1 and 
SRC lots becomes X2. So this is X1, this is X2. I can put some random values here. Net profit, this multiplied by net profit per lot, which is given here. And for it, it becomes number in B9 multiplied by F4, which is net profit per lot of SRC and then multiplied by number of SRC lots. This is just the summation of the total net profit including both DRC and SRC lots. Time used per hour it's so we have we have a cons so time used per lot per machine use suppose you make two it's become two into D3 and this for SRC lots it's become number of lots of SRC you're gonna make multiplied by processing time here this is total machine hour used so now we have a constraint uh, first constraint of course we have is we have a demand for cases so we have to meet demand for DRC lots which is three lots we have to meet SRC lot demand and then we have a constraint so our total here total machine hours has to be less than this let's go back to our PPT and see if we can show it in so if we write it in mathematic algebraic form it becomes maximize the total profit 400 profit per DRC into number of DRC lots plus 300 into number of SRC lots this thing is here And the constraints are written first constraints is total machine hours less than 150 then demand demand one so it has to be more than DRC whatever lots you're making has to be more than the minimum demand which is three and this is demand two so number of SRC lots making should be more than the minimum required that is four lots for SRC and this is a non-negative activity constraint that both the lots has values has to be more than equal to zero. If we try to solve this equation using graphs that's also possible graphical method is also possible. And this, in this approach, we graph the area of feasible solution that is objective function. Then we, we put the constraint also. All the constraints are graphically drawn. And then we try to find the coordinates. So let's graph the object. This is constraints. And then we find the coordinates for the optimal points where these both of them intersect and the value objective at the optimal point is normally the, the decision variable of interest that we are looking at for let's take this example first constraint is drawn non-negative t and constraint one is drawn like this second constraint is added here then the third constraint is also added which is in terms of here so all the three constraints are here and then we put an objective function so you see this is the when all the three this is the feasible area 
from here starting from here to here and then we draw this objective function and you can see this is the point where this intersection takes place so if this is dr x1 this is becomes 9 drc and this y coordinate which is x2 src takes the value of 4 so this is something we have found an optimal solution here but problem with the graphical solution is that sometime there are multiple solution in this case you can if the objective function is like this so there are multiple intersection points so there are so many multiple solution possible other problem is no solution so if you are if you're drawing all the constraint like this and then objective function lie here you will see that there's no intersection and then there's no solution sometime you see the a feasible area also lies beyond it so this we call it unbounded solutions so let's look at uh, s normally with solvers such problems are not encountered and uh, solvers suggest us microsoft excel suggest us the best solution and we go back and see how we can use microsoft excel to solve this linear programming optimization problem so we come back to this and then let's see there's a solver within on the top icon microsoft excel in the in the data when you click on data you will see on top and right side the solver add-in people who don't have the solver add-in you can click on file then go to microsoft excel options and then add in and when you click on add in you will see microsoft excel add in here you can click go and you can select solver add in here and i also select analysis tool pack which we're going to use some but some descriptive and predictive analytics so you click on solver add in here select it and click ok so you will see the solver on the top icons when you click on data you will see a solver yeah and when you click on solver it opens up a window for you so now first is ob setting an objective so my objective in this case is I want this is my profit so Rolls Bakery wants to maximize its profit by changing the decision variables so what are the decision variables how many DRC lots x1 and how many SRC lots to make each week and then what are the constraints so I'm gonna add some constraint my first constraint is this it has to be more than equal to three lots and I click on different choices choosing the direction of the constraint is less than equal to equal to greater than equal to integer being different if you want to learn more about solver then I have a separate session 30 minute session on Microsoft Excel solver add-in where I discuss everything in detail so you can view it so I add this is the first constraint then I ask my second constraint SRC lots should be greater than or equal to four lots then I set up my third constraint total machine hours per week less than or equal to 150 I think I'm okay these are the three constraints then I have to make both x1 x2 negative not negative non negative and more than equal to zero so i click here select a solving method i am doing a simple linear programming this is the option i select then i click on solve 
when I say it asks me to keep solver solution and then I say okay I ask for three reports So immediately you see the number which was one or two here has changed to nine and four. So this is solver has given me a solution that if I want to optimize my net profit, which is $4,800, when I use the total machine hours, then I should be looking at nine every week, nine lots of DRC, dinner roll cases, and four lots of sandwich roll cases. I can look at my answer report also so original value which when I was put two or three of them was 1770 the final value that solver has given me is 9 and 4 and the final value objective function which is maximized is 4800 and it tells me about constraint also total machine time used is 150 which is a binding so normally I'm interested in constraint which are binding because if I will increase the machine hours from 150 to 200 then definitely my objective function will increase but on the non binding even if I there's a slack available here even if I increase it by 6 it will not have an effect on my objective function but you can see SRC lots are binding so if I increase the number of SRC lots then the, my value of objective function for 0.800 will increase so now when it's binding the slacks are zero but when it's non binding you always find some slack here we can also look at some sensitivity analysis which I will talk which shows me the final values And it also shows me the constraint, some shadow price, and objective coefficient, and the allowable increase and decrease in the variables, and then allowable increase and decrease in the constraint. So you can see the solver has given linear using linear programming. We have found the solution to this production how many lots to produce it's a production issue we have found a solution and we can easily decide that if we want to increase the profit per week we should given the constraint we should be looking at nine lots producing nine lots of drc and four lots of src products And sometimes we find that uh, we can apply this LP models, linear programming with big data also. Key thing here is uh, first we, we use descriptive and predictive analytics to identify the problem areas and then we use ETL. In ETL in big data is very important to calculate input parameter like technological coefficient, contribution coefficient, resource availability define decision variables look for decision variable so it's more or less similar but only problem with big data is like when you etl extraction transformation and loading of the data normally in structured databases that is relatively simpler but in etl you have to have additional layer in middle so that the data is extracted transformed and lo loaded into a model descriptive model and then you can put linear programming analysis so rest of the steps remain as we discussed earlier I just recap identify the problem area with input parameters define the decision variable within the problem description you can easily see what are the variables that need to be changed so that your objective function if we formulate the objective function, find for the contribution coefficient, what is the goal that we're looking at maximizing the minimization. We identify the set of constraint, identify set of non-negative constraint, we solve the model, and then 
we fine tune the model and iterate. So uh, every time we have a new situation, new data set, we further keep on fine tuning, iterating the model. So this is linear programming, which is used in a uh, lot of optimization. scenarios in business analytics and it's used by businesses uh, for uh, help in the decision making i hope you like this video and this presentation we have several other presentations lined up for you which you can watch dealing with non-linear programming integer programming goal programming simulation modeling as well as predictive and descriptive analytics all of them will be dealing with specific cases in the area of operations and supply chain analytics looking forward to talk to you again uh, in the forthcoming sessions and presentations